In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the Helix Jargon and showing you exactly where to find what you need. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Today we are back with the Helix. I know I said I'd do more Helix videos and really I haven't. I'm going to be focusing on the Helix today, the big Helix, rather than the Stomp. But all of this applies to both of the units. I'm going to be talking you through things and terms like paths, um, snapshots, blocks, global EQ, global settings, command center. I'm going to be showing you where all of those are and also giving you an overview of what those do and dive into any useful settings that I use. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to see more hideous videos, I will try and make them more regular, even though I keep saying it and I haven't. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So here we are with the Helix. Um, now before I upset all of you, yes, this is a guitar patch. Uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes you've got to play other instruments and do other things. Um, please forgive me, all you bass players out there. But this applies to everybody, uh, no matter what instrument you're playing, whether you're running keyboards through it, running guitars through it, running basses through it, anything. These are all universal settings and ideas. So here we go, this is the standard page you're, you're greeted with when you turn on the Helix after the initial loading screen. And let's just go through some of the terms and some of what these different things are on the Helix. So the lines across the screen like this is called a path on the Helix. And the path meaning it takes you from one side of the Helix, the input, all the way to the output on this side. And that is the signal path going through. There's two of those on the big helix here, the helix floor. Um, you have one as standard when you start up an HX stomp, uh, but you can do all sorts of things. The paths are effectively the processors. So the helix floor has got two different processors in it, two DSP chips. Uh, it's got two, yeah, two CPUs effectively. And you can use one as one path and one as the other path. Each path represents a CPU, but sometimes you might want to have more effects, in which case you can run it through. So this path into this path and double up your DSP, your signal processing, uh, and just have pretty much as many effects as you like. On the HX Stomp, you can have a single path because it's only got one processor, but just like this, you can split it. So when we're talking about splitting a path, we're talking about doing something like this, where you click the action button, drag down, and then you've got a second sub path as part of your original chain. And that's still using the same processor, the same path, um, but a different signal split. So this signal is going to come off down here and then rejoin here just before the output. So that's what we mean when we're talking about paths. There are different videos that I've got where you can see me splitting things uh, and there's going to be more videos on parallel processing. So if you want to see those, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So that's a path. Next we have a block. Uh, a block is one of these things. So all of these little things here are called blocks. Um, they are your effects, your amps, your reverbs, everything is a block. You get a block by just pressing the button down here, going to something like EQ, any of these, doesn't matter, choosing whether you want it in mono or stereo, and then simply choosing your block. So go for a 10 band graphic, and now that block has appeared. Next, I'm going to go to global settings. So we find that in the menu button. Global settings is, well, probably one of the most important places on your Helix. This can really change entirely the way that you use your Helix. So here we can delve into all the settings um, and how the Helix is going to work. As you can see across the bottom here, there's tons of options, um, all to do with inputs and outputs when you're on the ins and outs. And press the page button and you can change all of these settings, so many settings. I'm not going to dive all the way in, but ins and outs determines what levels your input, inputs and outputs are working at um, and what kind of signal they're expected to see. Preferences uh, gives you all these little settings down here which are just kind of usability tweaks, um, things that you might want to twitch or might want to twitch, might want to tweak uh, or not. Next we've got MIDI tempo so this is all of your MIDI settings um, and synchronizing the Helix with external MIDI. These are super complex things um, but can be really useful and if you really dive in with a Helix and want to do say a whole live show with a whole band on Helixes Helices? One or the other you can really do some cool stuff so it's worth knowing about it and thinking about it maybe long term 
Displays, simple, just what you see and how to change anything you want to see. Expression pedals, talking about this pedal right here and then any extras you want to add and how they're going to behave. And then foot switches is one of the places that really changes entirely the way the Helix works. Um, so you have all of these settings all on one page. Uh, as I just obviously found out there when I pressed the page button and didn't do anything. You then have all the preset modes. So whether you want it to be um, that these pedals down here all show different presets or whether they show some presets and some stomp boxes. So the presets there and stomp boxes will be there. Um, stomp boxes will be there, presets there. Um, you can see, you get the idea. And it also talks about snaps. Um, so snaps are whether you want to work the Helix as a snapshot mode or a preset mode. I will move on to snapshots in a minute because that's one of the biggest ways you can change the way the Helix works. That preset mode switches changes entirely how the Helix works, so it's worth keeping in mind that setting. Um, and then stomp mode switches uh, just gets rid of the bank switches if you want. So you can have 10 stomps or you can have um, the banks on the end. Up to you. Same thing happens here with the up and down switches and snapshots. You can change the snapshots there. Um, this foot switch place is really the place to go if you want to change how your Helix is working if it's not quite doing the right things for you. So that's global settings. While we're there, let's talk about snapshots. So snapshots is one of the ways you can use the Helix. You can either use it just as it is right now, which is to be pretty much a pedal board. Obviously, I've only got one effect at the minute. This is probably the world's most boring pedal board, but you can use it as just a pedal board. Let me assign this to uh, foot switches so it doesn't look so lonely and a bit lame. Uh, there we go. Reverb onto here. There we go. So now we have some foot switches here. And because of the way that the global effects, the global settings were set, this is just basically stomp mode. So it's like your standard pedal board, you hit an effect on, the block comes on, there's your pedal board. Um, there you go, you want your reverb and your delay, and then add in, I'll oh, boost. No, I don't want boost now. That's the standard way it works. That stomp box mode. I don't know if they call it that, but that's what I'd call it. Um, you then have preset mode. So you press the mode button here, and that changes to preset mode. So preset mode, uh, we change entirely the whole set. So I'm just gonna hit save before I do this, because otherwise it's gonna look weird when I come back. So we've got the whole set of pedals, the whole chain and the whole path, as mentioned earlier, will change. So if I switch to then match one, that's my matchless amp, and that's changed the whole preset. So this is the other way you could use it. You could line up a sound on 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. Say maybe you could have the same amp or it could go all the way through, or you could have it set for a whole song. You could maybe have the song and have different air parts of the song, and you could switch the whole preset. But this is the second way to use the foot switches and get your sound. So that's probably quicker to dial up a whole load of changes, uh, maybe change a whole amplifier, something like that. The only thing with doing it like this is there is a little bit of a delay between each of them. It's not instant um, because they're not all lined up and it doesn't know you. Could, it doesn't really anticipate where you could be going with it. Um, so this is the second way you can use it. That's preset. And then the third mode is snapshot mode. So snapshot mode kind of takes your preset mode and then subdivides it. So you can have one A as your preset, and then you can have different snapshots within that. And you could set those snapshots to do, say, change your amp settings, change your reverb delay time, uh, change the drive. And you could do all of those at the same time by just changing to the next snapshot. So the idea is it's a snapshot of your rig in a moment. Um, so that's the way, the third way of running the Helix. That would be really good for something, as I was describing earlier, where you have maybe a, one song that has slightly different sections that you want, maybe a long reverb on something. Um, or you maybe want a bit more uh, drive without having to press the individual pedal. Maybe you want drive, but you also want a little bit more treble at that point or something. You can do all of those moves at once rather than having to do different foot switches. So that's the prime place for snapshots. So I hope that explains the three different terms of the stomp box setting, the preset setting, and the snapshot setting. There are much better videos out there that go into details on the snapshot stuff. Um, and I will do one myself, but for now, hopefully that's given you an idea of what snapshots, presets, and stomp mode mean, and also how you can get to them within global settings. Next, we'll go to global EQ, which again is a really cool setting, I think. 
Um, really useful to have this on your device. As you can see here, we've got the low frequencies, the high frequencies, sorry, the mid frequencies, high frequencies, and the low cut and high cut. That applies to everything on the Helix. So any preset you make, that EQ is going to be embedded into it. Um, so you can then change whether that applies here to just your quarter inch out, so maybe that's going to your amp, uh, just to the XLR, maybe going to the PA, or if you want it to go onto both outputs. Why would you want to do that? Well, for instance, if you are playing guitar and you want to low pass some of the really high top end, or you want to high pass some of the bottom end that you don't really need, this is a really good option for that. Um, they call it low cut and high cut, makes more sense for most people because low and high pass filters work backwards in terms of low pass allow the lows to pass and high pass allows the highs to pass. It's probably easier to call it low cut and high cut as they have done here. Um, quite often you're not going to want necessarily 20k on most instruments um, unless you want a really bright airy sound. Quite a lot of instruments can just live happily within under the 10k range. Um, but say you might want to do under 12k for guitar to take any brittle harshness off the ear. Um, and you could have this low cut here just to cut out anything um, that's sub low that you don't need and it's just going to be rumble and junk and going to clash with say the bass or if you're a bass player you might want to take it down to something like 40 hertz and just make sure that nothing underneath that is rumbling and grumbling around and not really helping your sound and just going to potentially just blow up your amp for you know you're just going to be pumping low end you don't need into it so this applies to everything you do no matter what your settings are within each preset um, whatever stomp boxes you're using, whatever snapshots you're set to, this is going to apply to everything that ever comes out of your Helix. So that's what Global EQ is for, um, but I think having that high cut and low cut is really useful. Uh, and if you always know that you're going to kind of be boosting a certain frequency or that really pleases you, then it's worth keeping this in mind and keeping it there and making sure you go back to it. This is going to save you time in the long run rather than doing it on every single preset. Back to the home screen and then to the main menu. Um, controller assign is a useful one and um, this is for just assigning your effect to a controller um, so I can set this reverb to the expression pedal sorry it's set to expression 2 and um, press the learn controller button and then I can control parts of the reverb in this instance it would be the decay with the controller um, being here the expression pedal so that's really cool you can do some really crazy things with that and plug in loads more expression pedals and get all sorts of parameters that you can control on the fly while you're playing um, using this or you know any of these other options here um, they all can tweak those settings so controller assign is really cool and um, really useful to know about and changes again some of the ways you can use your helix and bypass assign um, similar thing it's about how the block you're on relates to these pedals down here so foot switch 10 um, that's where it's currently assigned to and you can change whether you hold that down and it becomes active or whether you latch it you know press it once and it's on press it again and it's off um, again all things that can tweak how you're using it and also you've got midi in there as well so you can have like i was talking about earlier some external midi controlling what you're doing Final one is Command Center, which is incredibly complex, um, but I'll just scroll through here and you can see all the different ways in which you can tweak what foot switch one does and how it behaves. Uh, I'm not going to go mad in this one because, to be honest, I'm not an expert on Command Center, um, but you can get really detailed and really get into those specifics about how you want to hit it to work with Control Center. Command Center, not Control Center. That's on Windows, I think. So the last few basics in terms of terminology that I just want to dive into quickly. Um, we've got the menu button here, that's the menu button. That's the home button which takes you back to where your amp and everything is set. The bank button changes your presets. So if you press the bank button here, that shows you the next load of presets um, and you can you know choose from those. So that's how you get from one bank of presets to a whole other bank. Um, quickly. This is the tuner button, just hold it down, that's where you can find your tuner. Um, and if you want to tap the tempo for an effect, you just tap it there, and it will show you the tempo that you've set. This is the bypass button, which will just deactivate any of your blocks. The action button, which will allow you to tweak those blocks, so you can copy that block, clear a block, 
clear all of the blocks on the whole patch, the whole setting, um, turn snapshots on and off and whether snapshots affect your amp or not, um, and also gives you add to favorites if you want to add something as a favorite effect or amp. Last thing we have is the page button, and as you can see this little bar here doesn't go all the way across, which means there are other pages that we can see um, to change the effect, tweak settings, and so we just press the page button and that will take us right across to all the other settings. So that's just a quick rundown of all of the jargon that I can think of off the top of my head that you might come across in the Helix at the minute. Thank you to John McMinn, uh, who is a user who suggested that I make a video like this to talk about different Helix terms. I love it when you guys have suggestions and things you want to see, so do leave that in the comments below. Let me know if there's any Helix terms that you're not yet familiar with, things you can't find on the Helix, all that sort of thing is really good for me to be able to make videos and give me ideas and help you guys out, most importantly. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you're new around here and want to see more videos on Helix content, that I will do, I promise. Hit the subscribe button and that notification bell to see when I go live and the latest of my videos. Hope that's all you need. Go and enjoy exploring your helixes or helices again. And I will see you in the next video.